Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Game to the Com video, we're going to be discussing Cable Lake. Now, at CES 2017, Intel will be debuting the Cable Lake series of chips along with the 200 series board. But in the meantime, some news has popped up concerning the overclockability of both the 7700K and the 7600K, which are naturally the successors to Skylink. Now, just to give you a basic indication of what these chips can run at at factory default they are of course using a slightly refined 14 nm finfet process and we are looking at the 7700k naturally with four uh, cores but capable of handling multi-threading and boosting up to 4.2 gigahertz that's with an 8 megabyte of level 3 cache meanwhile the 7600k is slightly more anemic in both the cache and the boosting and it runs at just six megabytes with four gigahertz um, clock speed that's a uh, boost but what can you actually get out of the damn thing if you decide to overclock manufacturers at the moment are allowing the 100 series boards to be updated to run the cable lake series of chips which is fantastic incidentally because there was some ambiguity whether that would be the case so some engineering samples and some early samples of the chips were leaking out for some time but now early retail samples appear to be coming into the wild so we have some results for the both the 7700k and the 7600k now we'll start with the 7700k because it's the more nuts of the two as it was done with liquid nitrogen cooling and this these results were achieved by hk epc now we're not 100% sure if this is an engineering sample, but it also could be a retail chip because there's some, uh, they've basically scuffed out the marks, so you can't see what one it is. However, the chip itself was running on an ASRock Z, Z, or Z, depending on what region of the world you're from, 170M OC Formula motherboard and using Galax HOF DDR4 memory. What they did essentially was once again run on LN2, but they basically raised the multiplier up to a gargantuan 67 times. This means that the clock is running, the core clock is running at 6.7 gigahertz, which is absolutely nuts. Now naturally the fact that it is liquid nitrogen means a couple of things. One, we don't know what the voltage is, but it's probably going to be pretty damn high because liquid nitrogen is not exactly, uh, <laughs> it's not exactly something you're going to be running in your rig 24-7. And naturally because it's not stuff that you're going to be running on your rig 24 7 this is probably way above the average user um, is going to be able to achieve but there is some good news because a 7600k was also overclocked and it managed to achieve 5.1 gigahertz now they used an ASRock Maximus um, 8 gene motherboard and this was overclocked by Facebook HK which is a rather interesting name they managed to do so via a 40 multiplier, but they increased the bus to 127.51. Just for those of you who do not know, I'm pretty sure most of you do, the core clock speed, or rather the raw clock speed of a chip, is generally the multiplier combined with the FSB. So, for example, if you have a 20 multiplier and a 100 bus, you simply take, take the 20 times 100, and there's your raw clock speed or in this case it's 40 times 127.51 and that gives you the 5100.60 megahertz now there are a couple of things to note with this the temperatures were good given the images we're seeing i mean they're looking at just around the 27 degrees mark but the second thing and this one's probably more importantly we are not looking at at the clock speed necessarily you're going to be able to get with the 7700k it might be a little bit higher because it has a higher default clock i'm not going to lie to you however silicon lottery does come into things but 1.5 volts is not abnormally high but obviously silicon lottery means that you could just get really 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 unlucky and your and your uh, 7700k may just refuse to budge over like 4.6 gigahertz Whereas your friend Bob might happen to buy a 7600K and they might be able to push it up to 5.5 gigahertz and just be insanely fortunate. So there is that to it. Ultimately, overclockability of both the 7600K and the 7700K is not really the outliers that most folks are going to be taking into account. They're going to be looking at the average chip. Now, I do know of some people, especially on some forums I used to frequent, who were pretty 
pretty adamant on getting the highest clock speeds they could. Uh, they weren't really doing it for performance reasons, they were doing it because they were competing or whatever, and therefore they would potentially go through like 7 2500Ks. Or they'd even buy like old Pentium 4 chips to, just to get them up to a certain clock speed, or they would use certain other projects, and once again, there was no rhyme or reason to it, they would just want to do it, and they would constantly buy new chips, even if it was only for like 50 or 100 megahertz, and bear in mind, you're dealing with chips that are running like 3 or 4 gigahertz, but they're doing it for the sake of competition, and for example, they might be run running certain benchmarks and trying to squeeze every last megahertz out of their chip. But for the average user, once again, for gamers especially, the average overclock and value for money really come into it. The reason I'm bringing this up, of course, is naturally going to be Zen. Now, we don't honestly know what Zen is going to be able to perform like, and we don't know the final clock speeds of Zen, and I know I've mentioned this a couple of times over by now, but I've had a few people messaging me, like, should they buy one chip over the other one if it's released first, if there's like a couple of weeks window or maybe a month window or what have you, my answer is always pretty similar. Like, unless there's quite a large gap between the release dates, for example, let's just, for example, say that uh, KBLA comes out two months earlier than Zen and you desperately need a new PC, I can definitely understand people just jumping on KBLA. But if there's not much of a gap between them, I'd personally rather wait. So really, AMD need to compete in being able to at least put out a similar-ish performance at the same clock speed, value for money, pricing, value for money and pricing are two different things, remember. For example, some products could do pretty well, but other mainstream products might just be, you know, pretty good value for money, but they just don't compete because their price for single thread just isn't that great, just for example. And ultimately, it's going to be an interesting couple of months, I think, once both chips are going to be released. And I have a feeling there's going to be quite a few forum debates on which is the best option. But I think no matter which one you go for, um, both are definitely going to have their, uh, their fans. My only personal complaint, once again, and I've said this a few thousand times over, with KB Lake, is that once again, we're seeing just the old tired 4-core um, up to two threads per core formula, which is a little bit tired by now. Fortunately, Intel, as you know, as regular viewers will know, are going to be changing that over the next couple of years. But for now, we are going to be looking at at least at a pretty overclockable, at least given these rumours, set of chips. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Sorry, it's been a bit of a short one. Uh, I'm going to be helping a friend do some stuff later on, so I don't have that much time today. But hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves, and if you could do the subscribe thing, that would be greatly appreciated. Bye.